Hello there, in this video we will discuss module 4 discrete probability distributions. Our first stop is going to be an introduction to these types of distributions. So when I say discrete probability distributions, we are talking about looking at all of the possible outcomes of an experiment and their corresponding probabilities. For instance, if I wanted to flip a coin five times, what is the probability you get zero heads, one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, and listing each of those probabilities? Yes, it is a lot of calculating. So first, a random variable is a variable which represents the outcomes of a statistical experiment. So we represent random variables with capital letters like X, Y, and Z, and then specific values these random variables can equal are represented with lowercase letters. So don't let the word random variable scare you. It just means basically the outcomes of a statistical experiment. So let's say let X be a random variable representing the number of heads you get when you flip a coin five times. That's all it's saying. A discrete random variable is, if you recall what discrete data is, or discrete data are, it's a random variable whose outcomes are countable. So remember, these are those nice pretty whole numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. A continuous random variable is a random variable whose outcomes are measured. So we said in particular this is decimals. And then you get to choose how accurate you want to be, how many decimal places you want to go to. In a nutshell, that's what we said continuous was. So this module, we focus solely on discrete. Continuous is going to come at a later time. So we're focusing only on discrete random variables, nice whole number values. So identify each of the following random variables as discrete, continuous, or neither. So it's like a little game. So A, the amount of rainfall which occurs in Jacksonville, Florida on a certain day. So amount of rainfall, typically it's measured in inches. Can I take on decimal values to as many places of accuracy or precision as I would like? The answer is yes. Amount of rainfall is continuous. It is a measurement. What about the number of sandwiches made by a deli on a certain day of the week? The number of sandwiches is whole number values, so we're talking discrete. What about the gender of a person? Well, that's either male or female. It is not a numeric value that gender takes on. Therefore, it is neither. What about the time it takes for someone to run a mile? So we're talking time. Well, when you measure time, you can have decimal values, and you can go to as many decimal places as you want as far as the precision goes. So what happens here is you say, okay, it took me 1.5 minutes to run that to run that course. It took me 1.51 minutes. It took me 1.523 minutes and so forth. You can be as specific as you want. Therefore, time is continuous. We're talking about minutes and seconds. So a probability distribution gives the various probabilities of outcomes of an experiment. So like I said with the coin flipping, you flip a coin five times, what's the probability of getting anywhere from zero to five heads? That's what you would have to list as your outcomes for the experiment. You would have to calculate each of those probabilities. So here are the requirements for a probability distribution. There is a random variable x. Remember that is the experiment you're performing, what you're looking at, your corresponding probabilities and their outcomes. The sum of all probabilities must be 1. So all of the probabilities total of every outcome will add up to 1. And each probability, each individual probability of each outcome must be between 0 and 1. So we will mainly focus on requirements 2 or 3 here. Those are the very important ones you have to check. So I have an example of a probability distribution. Let x be the number of 3's when a die is rolled 3 times. So the possible number of 3's you can get when you roll a die 3 times is 0, 1, 2, or 3. You calculate each of these individual probabilities. So there's four probabilities to calculate. The reason why this is a probability distribution is because all probabilities are between 0 and 1, and notice the probabilities add up to 1. That's very important. Very important. The probabilities must add up to 1. What about a non-example? Let x be the number of field goals a football player makes in three kicks. Sure, you football player can get anywhere from zero to three field goals, 
and we have probabilities between 0 and 1. However, if you were to add up those probabilities, feel free to try it if you want, the probabilities do not add up to 1. So, do not add to 1. So this is not a probability distribution. So, someone didn't make it correctly. That's a non-example. We can look at probability distributions and calculate their mean. It's the long-term average when an experiment is repeated many times. And standard deviation is a number that measures how far the outcomes of a statistical experiment are from the mean. So it's just like standard deviation you learned about previously, except now we're talking about with probability distributions. So formulas. The mean of a probability distribution, that would be mu, is equal to we literally take every data value, multiply by its probability, in other words we multiply rows together, and then add up all of those products. Multiply rows together from the distribution and add up all of those products. Or all of those, yeah, all those products. The variance or sigma squared formula is a bit more complicated. Literally you subtract the mean from every data value, you square that result, then you multiply by the probability, then you add everything together. Sounds to me like we're going to use a technology shortcut there. There is an actual mathematical shortcut or an arithmetical shortcut you can use for variance, and that's multiplying every data value squared by its probability and then subtracting the overall mean or expected value of the distribution squared well, after you add up all of the data value squared times probability. Standard deviation, remember that's just square root of the variance. So we'll use technology for that in our next upcoming examples. But for this one, let's actually calculate the mean by hand. So we're going to let x be our random variable, and it's the number of girls in two births. So you can have anywhere from 0, 1, and 2 girls born. So the probabilities are given in the right-hand column. To find the expected value, literally multiply across on your rows. Multiply every data value by its probability. The expected value is the sum of these products. Notice that your probabilities add up to 1. That means the probability distribution was made correctly. So when you multiply across your rows, 0 times 0.25 is 0. 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. 2 times 0.25 is also 0 0.5. So remember, we're literally multiplying across the rows. I'll put the asterisk there to represent multiplication. And then you add up these products to get 1. You could get 2, you could get 3, you could get anything for the expected value. 1 is the answer. So the mean, or expected value, the two words are used interchangeably. The mean, mu, is equal to 1. So this is mu. The Greek letter mu, the mean is equal to 1. And what this means is that if you go to infinitely many people that are giving birth to two children, the average number of girls born would be 1, which makes sense because typically there's a 50-50 chance. What is the probability of exactly one girl being born? So what is the probability that a random variable takes on the value of 1, that the number of girls being born is exactly 1? So we look at the one row in the table, and what is the probability? The probability is actually 0.5. So that's how you interpret the table. What is the probability of one or more girls being born? So what is the probability that the number of girls born is greater than or equal to 1? So that means, what are all of the categories that are greater than or equal to 1? Well. We have 1 itself and 2. Those are the only data values or outcomes that are greater than or equal to 1. So we add together the two probabilities for those corresponding outcomes. You have 0.5 or 0 0.50 plus 0.25. And the answer is 0.75. That is the probability of one or more girls being born. So that's just kind of to get your feet wet with regard to probability distributions. We will actually use Google Sheets, and I'm going to show you how to use Google Sheets to calculate the mean and even the variance or standard deviation of a probability distribution, a discrete probability.
probability distribution. So let x be the number of threes when a die is rolled three times. We're going to find the mean, we're going to find the standard deviation. So we're going to find mu, and we're going to find sigma. We'll do that using Google Sheets. So for Google Sheets, we're literally going to go to our Google Sheets document, and we're going to go to the two variable stats tab. And notice you have a column A and B that both have data. This is where you will actually type your probability distribution. So starting in cell A2, you'll type 0, 1, 2, 3. So probabilities, 0 0.579, 0 0.347, 0 0.069, 0 0.005. And you'll notice that you'll see this bar in the top right corner that's calculating. And it's going to calculate many times. As long as that bar is up there, we have not calculated our answer just yet. So here's what's going to happen now is we need to find the mean and standard deviation. And actually, the mean and standard deviation are way off to the right-hand side. So make sure you get plenty of time for the spreadsheet to calculate. The gray bar on top must be gone for a long period of time, and that means your calculation is done. So here we go over to the right. Stats is frequency table or expected value. You see here you have a mean, you have a standard deviation. Those are the two values that you want for your answer. So over here in column R, that's where you're looking. The mean is 0.5 and the population standard deviation to three decimal places is 0.647. So column R is where we look. Make sure you get plenty of time for your, for your spreadsheet to calculate. So we said the mean is 0.5. And we said the standard deviation is 0.647. much easier than doing a bunch of calculations by hand. What is the probability of exactly one three being rolled? So what is the probability that the number of threes, our random variables, is representing the number of threes rolled? What is the probability that x is equal to one? Remember, look at your table. Look at our row. That has one. The outcome of one has a probability of 3.347. There's your answer. 0.347. What is the probability of at least one three being rolled? So the probability that the number of threes rolled is greater than or equal to one. So this means one, two, and three. Add up those three probabilities. Add up 0 0.347 plus 0 0.069 plus 0 0.005. You will add up these three probabilities and what's actually going to happen is you will get 0 0.421. 0 0.421 is the answer for part C. And another way to do this, another way to do this would be to say, hey, I know that all of the data or all the probabilities in the distribution add up to one. Well, if you take out the only outcome that's not included, if you take away 0.579, it'll tell you the sum of the other three outcomes. This is kind of like the complement rule. So you say, okay, all the probabilities out of the one, let me take out the value that is supposed to be excluded, zero, which has a probability of 0.579, and that would still give you 0.421. So there's many ways you can attack this sort of question. So that was some information about probability distributions that are discrete and we learn how to calculate their mean standard deviation and how to read them and what the requirements must be to have a probability distribution so that's all i have for now thank you for watching